Hey guys, welcome back. So this week we're going to be diving in a little bit to talk about dinghies, also known as your car when you're living out here on the water. Basically your main boat, you don't go to and from shore with it unless you're getting fuel, going into the marina for repairs, or taking a dock slip for a storm or something like that. Once you get on Anchorage, your main mode of transportation is either paddle boards, kayaks, or a dinghy or all the above depending on what you have on board. For us, when we first bought the boat, it came with a 14 foot Aruba center console with a Honda 40 horse, which was way too long for this boat and it was also way too heavy for this boat. So we ended up buying a new dinghy, which is a Highfield 360 Classic, which is a 11 and a half foot aluminum bottom, which is a lot lighter. And it came basically for a rear mount tiller steer so we decided that we did like the console option so we ended up buying kind of a hodgepodge mix of pieces and putting together our own setup because highfield is only willing to sell you what they call the euro console which i'll show an example clip here um, basically it's a bench seat in the rear and then a floating steering wheel and an open bow, which still doesn't really give your partner any place to sit other than shoulder to shoulder in the rear, which doesn't really help for balancing the dinghy when you're trying to plane or just, you know, comfort when you're going to and from on a longer dinghy ride. So basically what we ended up doing was buying a new Highfield 360 Classic and then piecing together a center console and a rear seat that belonged to a different dinghy which required us to track down a metal fabricator to make us a rear bracket. We like our setup for a couple reasons. One, it's unique. You don't see a lot of them like it. For two, it gives comfort for two people to sit without having to sit side by side and still gives a little bit of floor space because what we did was we offset our console instead of mounting it smack dab in the center, we mounted it off to the starboard side to give a walkway for one and for two just a little bit better seating arrangement if there was more than just the two of us. The problem we ran into when we were outfitting our high field was the floors have a taper kind of like a V to the middle floor and then a flat plank in the center. So it's not truly a flat bottom dinghy. So when you're trying to get a console or a seat that isn't specific to this boat, your base angles are gonna be off, which meant that we had to basically find the angle of the floor and then cut the console and the base of the seat to match that angle before bolting it down. And that's exactly what we did. So once we tracked down all of our components, we ended up taking it to a shop that we bought the outboard from, which we ended up going with the Suzuki 25 horse four stroke. Ultimately, we wanted the 30 horse just because that's the maximum you can put on this type of dinghy. So why wouldn't you? But unfortunately, at the time when we bought everything, there was the global supply chain problems going on and we couldn't find a 30 anywhere, including even in the US to have shipped down to us in St. Martin. But luckily there was a Suzuki dealer in St. Martin that had the 25 horse four stroke on the floor, which was the electric start, electric tilt, which is something that we wanted with the console because otherwise you're going back pole starting and you can't really trim it when you're underway, which helps balance out the dinghy. So additionally, wanted to have a tack for the motor to monitor RPMs. A speedometer because well you always like to know how fast you're going and then we also put in a depth sounder just to kind of keep a gauge on depths when you're running around so you don't run aground and bang up your prop even though you can pretty much visually see out here because the water's so clear it was just kind of an added feature to help fill out the dash the tack itself is the feria i think i pronounced that probably wrong chesapeake ss along with the speedo which is the gps version so you don't have to run a paddle wheel on the back the tack is specific to suzuki so it also gives you the warning lights in the gauge of oil pressure water temp and rev limiter which is just a bonus to have so when the alarm goes off it indicates what it actually is the problem rather than just some beeping sound coming from your outboard. So once we acquired all of our pieces and had it assembled and installed it, we now had a brand new Highfield 360 Classic with a custom center console, a custom rear seat, and a Suzuki 25 four-stroke. Being a huge car guy that I am, I always like to customize my cars to look different than the other ones in the parking lot. So for me, getting this dinghy, it was no different. We ended up getting a set of used chaps for it that helped dirty it up a little bit. And then we ended up buying some 3M wrap 
to wrap the motor to make it look rusted and patinaed, which gives it kind of that rat rod vibe along with our rusty dirty chaps. Um, I personally like the look. It really wasn't that tall of a task. It was just finding the right pieces and fits. Um, the rear seat we had to make sure wasn't too wide for our tube so when you're underway and they're rubbing you don't wear out the tube. The center console was pretty easy actually because there wasn't very many to choose from in stock so it was either that one or a bigger one that didn't fit very well. Um, so we went with that one and on that console we removed the windshield and we had the metal guy that fabricated our rear bracket also shorten the handlebar. I believe he shortened it four or six inches pretty substantially you can tell from the pictures um, so you still have a place to grab onto when you come into the dinghy um, but you don't have it that big loop around the windshield we also added a steering wheel that was the low profile on the back so it fit in the console okay with all the gauges we also added a lock on the outboard even though we're bolted through the transom it just provides an extra layer of security in the event somebody tries to make off with your dinghy or your outboard hopefully you found some of this dinghy information helpful and if you're in the market for a dinghy and you have questions please feel free to reach out and ask i'll do my best to help fill you in and if you're here just watching for fun stay tuned for